And these are the tracks. So to build the tracks, you have to first cut all the pieces where you start with the two and a half inch by half inch track pads. You cut them to size from 10 or 20 foot long pieces. You then cut the chain links, which are 5.5 inches. You punch the holes in the chain links and then cut the corners from the, the links. And at the end, to finish the link, there's another piece that's torched off so that there's no interference in the actual track. The next step after that is to build the pins. The pins consist of a one inch shaft with a washer welded on top. They're first cut to size, washer is welded, and then you, you drill a hole for the cotter pin to go in. And once the tracks are in being made, you, you lay up all the tracks, you've built all the pieces, you, you got your track pads, the chain links, and the pins, and also the rollers. The rollers are the thing that the sprocket rides on top of. They roll freely around the pin and provide a low friction surface, like just like a, a super supersized bicycle chain. With all of that in place, you lay out a 10 foot section of track, which is essentially the entire track consisting of 40 pieces. And with that in place, meaning the, the track is already laid out, you can start welding. Now, how do you know the quality control here? Is that track gonna fit? Well, the biggest important part for quality control was the fact that every single link was done on a hole puncher where we used a jig that put a three inch space between the pieces for every single piece. And the way we did it was is we put in a spacer inside a jig when we needed the three inch spaced hole, we took out that spacer and that way all the holes were exactly three inches. So now we lay out, lay out everything on a table, we tack weld everything and we know that that is all aligned. And then after the tack weld, you do the finish welding. The only trick being that because you have inner and outer chain links, you have to lift up one chain, the outer ones to expose the inner side. So you have to, the only real trick, and we did have issues with that, is when you weld, the track pieces, the links, tended to get pulled out by the weld, in which case we had to do grinding or, or hammer them back in. That was a time consuming part. So the technique is there, uh, has to be clear, where you weld in a consecutive fashion, one side, other side, so that you don't uh, basically spread out and make the tracks not fit. That pretty much completes the tracks. Once you have a finished track, it wraps around itself with a master link at the end. We did two things actually. In, in some of the pins we used cotter pins, in others simply because the drilling of the holes actually is quite time intensive and we broke a few bits, we ended up tacking the second half. Once we have the pin with the head, we ended up tacking the other side to lock it into place while leaving five master links throughout the chain so we can, when the chain breaks, we can, we can, well, we can break the chain apart ourselves. In order to put on the tracks on the bulldozer, you have to first loosen the idler wheels and then tension the track once you put the track on. To connect the track, you put a, a master link in, uh, and at that point, the tracks are gonna be somewhat so soggy, a little loose, so there's a tensioning mechanism consisting of a U-bolt, which we have fabricated out of one inch threaded rod which upon turning a set of bolts at the front of the machine, you tighten the tensioner, which essentially pulls on one of the shafts of the idlers, therefore making the tracks very tight.